Alright, hey YouTube, I got a uh, an article out of CBC, I want to, uh, CBC News I want to share with you. It's uh, Prime Minister Stephen Harper is on his way to the Ukraine. Well, he will uh, be the first G7 leader to visit the Eastern Euro European country since Russia President Vladimir Putin moved to make Crimea a part of Russia. Okay, so there's a big lie right there. Crimea has been a part of Russia for a very long time, so lie number one. The Prime Minister's plane departed at about 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time Friday. That's probably true. All right, Canada has joined other G7 leaders in their condemnment of Russia's military action against Ukraine uh, and last Saturday's, or last, sorry, last Sunday's referendum results which have been denounced as a violation of international law. Not like going to a war in Afghanistan, though. That didn't violate international law. Oh, by the way, when did we do a, uh, a formal investigation to the 24 Canadians that were murdered uh, during September 11th? When did we do an investigation to figure out? Yeah, I don't remember that part. All right, Harper's visit to Kiev on Saturday, where he will meet with Ukraine's inner intern Prime Minister Arseniy Yatsenyuk. Okay, I probably said his name completely wrong, but here's what he looks like. Okay, so expressions of Canada's principal stand on Ukraine, said the Prime Minister's Director of Communication, Jason McDonald, in an interview with CBC News on Thursday. All right, Harper will use Saturday's photo op with Yakutsun as an opportunity to show that Canadian condemns Russia's illegal occupation of Crimea you know, that they've had for hundreds of years, and continues to stand in solidarity with the people of Ukraine as they move to build a democratic country with the presidential elections set for May 25th. And I wonder who will set up the elections. And I wonder if they'll actually be digital elections. They'll probably have those electronic voting machines. The West will bring those in. It'll make the elections go much faster. Uh, by the way, a uh, big vote in Crimea... 96% uh, of the population want to be part of Russia, so during the crisis in this country, no G7 leader has set foot in Ukraine um, since the political unrest. The significance of Harper's visit did not escape Ukraine's ambassador to Canada, uh, Vadim Perestiko. I don't know who that is or if I said that properly. This is a very particular one and one and the significance uh, of this visit that Canada has taken the leadership on assistance to Ukraine. Uh, Perchenko said Thursday during an interview with CBC News, Canada's aid to Ukraine as well as the sanctions it has imposed on Russia have been a lockstep with similar announcements made by the international community. President Barack Obama announced further sanctions against Russia on Thursday and Vladimir is really scared. These, these sanctions are really scaring him. And it's only going to hurt everybody because you know that Russia uh, supplies a lot of oil to the West and to Europe, and so it's just, you're going to see gas prices probably start to go up. Uh, Obama announced sanctions, uh, okay, so uh, Thursday, which prompted Putin to retaliate by um, barring a number of U.S. government officials from traveling to Russia, including House Spe Speaker John Boner and Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid. Obama, okay, Canada welcomes the sanctions by the U.S. administrations. Um, can uh, McDonald told CBC News, Canada has announced a $220 million in financial assistance to Ukraine. Most of it uh, conditional on the establishment of a border package by the International Monetary Fund. Your money, my money, our tax dollars going over there to help fund the West, to help fund them to try and overthrow this guy. Like, this is the New World Order, people need to wake up. You think your government's safe here in Canada? You think you're safe here in Canada? You think Stephen Harper's not on board? Why Why did we sign the the, the arms treaty for the uh, the UN arms treaty? Uh, how about that uh, that China trade agreement? How about that one? Like, come on. Um, how about, uh, oh, let's see, the, um, the election. There was enough uh, evidence during the last election for voter fraud. Like, come on. We need to wake up, people. 220 million in financial assistance after George Soros has already spent, what, a billion, more than a billion trying to destabilize the country? Uh, the Canadian government has also imposed economic sanctions and bans travel on Ukraine and Russian officials. They're gearing us up for war. This is, this is all pretext for war. 
and and our our government is totally on. Do, do you want war with Russia? Do you want to go to war with Russia? Do you, do you think a nuclear war is good for the world, for Canada? Like, come on, people, wake up. So Stephen Harper is going to meet Arseny Yakovich, um, who is the in charge prime minister right now, and he's he is the puppet government who was put in by the West after the Demo after the democratically elected leader had been thrown out, actually fleeing the country to Russia. So Stephen Harper is going to meet this guy. This guy hangs out with this guy named Olia Tiakenbuk. And he's a Nazi. So we've got Stephen Harper going to see Arsenir Yakik, or whatever his name is, who hangs out with Oli Tenbuk, who's a Nazi. So your prime minister is going to Ukraine with, to meet an Ill illegitimate prime minister who was put in by the West who associates with Nazis. Your prime minister is going to associate with Nazi sympathizers. Congratulations, Canada. Welcome to your totalitarian government. So go go read this for yourself. Like uh, it's right there in front of you. All you gotta do is read it. It's right there. Like I don't even know what to say. Bologna.